Adolf Hitler, one of history's most infamous figures, casts a long and unexpected shadow over the lives of his descendants. Currently, there are only five living members of the Hitler family, and they're determined to put an end to their bloodline. If they have their way, the family bloodline will stop with them. But what exactly has happened to Adolf Hitler's descendants? In this video, we dive into the intriguing and often hidden story of these individuals who are tied by blood to a legacy tainted by tyranny and atrocity. We take a closer look at the lives of those who bear a name associated with unimaginable evil, exploring their challenges, decisions, and efforts to establish an identity separate from their notorious ancestor. Come along with us as we reveal the untold chapters of history, shedding light on the destinies of Hitler's descendants in the contemporary world. William Patrick Hitler William Patrick Hitler's life is a captivating tale woven with the complexities and shadows of his infamous uncle, Adolf Hitler. Born in Liverpool, England in 1911 to Alois Hitler Jr. and his Irish wife, Bridget Dowling, William's early years seemed worlds away from the tumultuous politics of Germany. Alois, William's father, was the half-brother of Adolf Hitler, and the intricate web of family ties would come to define much of William's life. During his early upbringing, William enjoyed a relatively ordinary existence in England. However, the ascent of his uncle, Adolf Hitler, to power in Germany drastically altered the course of his life. Fueled by a sense of opportunity and perhaps a desire to explore his uncle's newfound prominence, William made the bold decision to relocate to Germany in the early 1930s. This move marked the beginning of a complex and often strained relationship with his uncle, who was now the Chancellor of Germany. Initially, William sought to capitalize on his family connection. Adolf Hitler assisted him in securing a prestigious position at the Opel Car Factory, a well-paying job that would have been the envy of many during that era. Nevertheless, the bond between uncle and nephew was anything but straightforward. William harbored ambitions for more and recognized that his connection to Adolf Hitler could be a potent bargaining tool. He attempted to manipulate his uncle by threatening to reveal dark family secrets, including episodes of poverty, mental illness, and inbreeding from their shared family history. Despite his initial attempts at manipulation, William Patrick Hitler's time in Germany was relatively brief. As tensions in Europe surged towards the brink of war, he made the decision to return to England. Back in his home country, he embarked on a path of distancing himself from his uncle's regime, taking a bold step by openly speaking out against it. In 1939, he penned a scathing article titled Why I Hate My Uncle for Look magazine, in which he openly criticized Adolf Hitler. This courageous act placed him squarely in the crosshairs of the Nazi regime, effectively severing any remaining ties with his family in Germany and marking him as a traitor in their eyes. With the outbreak of World War II, William sought refuge in the United States, where he capitalized on his unique position as Adolf Hitler's nephew. He became a prominent figure in American society, giving numerous interviews, writing articles, and embarking on a lecture tour where he shared his personal insights and criticisms of his uncle's regime. His perspective as a member of the Hitler family, connected to one of history's most reviled leaders, made him a subject of intense fascination and curiosity in the United States. One of the most astonishing twists in William's life was his decision to enlist in the United States Navy a move that placed him on the front lines of the fight against the very country his uncle led. This extraordinary act served as a powerful statement against the Nazi regime and served as a clear manifestation of his personal condemnation of the atrocities perpetrated by his infamous relative. William Patrick Hitler's life was marked by a series of tumultuous choices, ultimately leading him to stand firmly on the side of justice and against the horrors perpetuated by Adolf Hitler's regime. Following the conclusion of World War II, William Patrick Hitler's life took a quieter and more introspective turn. 
In an effort to distance himself from the burdensome legacy of the Hitler name, he made the significant decision to change his last name to Stuart Houston. This symbolic change served as a means of breaking free from the notorious association with Adolf Hitler and the dark history it entailed. Settling in Patchogue, New York, William embarked on a life that stood in stark contrast to the tumultuous years of his early adulthood. He transitioned into a life of relative obscurity, far removed from the infamy that had surrounded his family name. In this new chapter of his life, William built a family of his own, raising four sons and embracing the role of a husband and father. His life in Patchogue offered a tranquil respite from the tumultuous past that had defined his earlier years. The story of William Patrick Hitler, spanning from his birth in Liverpool to his sojourn in Germany and eventual relocation to the United States, serves as a poignant testament to the intricate interplay between family identity and history. His journey encapsulates a relentless struggle against a legacy that he neither chose nor endorsed. The pivotal decisions he made, from openly opposing his uncle's regime to serving in the United States Navy, were bold steps in the ongoing quest to forge an identity that stood apart from the ominous shadow cast by Adolf Hitler. William's life, forever overshadowed by the legacy of his uncle, illuminates the enduring challenges faced by individuals connected to infamous figures in history. Hitler's siblings, Adolf Hitler's family tree, while not as infamous as the dictator himself, unfolds as a complex tapestry of individuals who grappled with the heavy burden of their association with one of history's most reviled figures. This chapter embarks on a journey into the lives of Hitler's siblings and half-siblings, namely Alois Jr., Angela, and Paula, along with their descendants, shedding light on how they navigated the looming shadow cast by their notorious relative, Alois Hitler Jr., he is Adolf's half-brother, traversed a tumultuous path through life, characterized by legal entanglements and strained family dynamics. Born in 1882 in Austria-Hungary, Alois's relationship with his father, Alois Sr., was fraught with tension, prompting him to leave home at an early age. He eventually settled in Ireland, where he met and married Bridget Dowling. Their union resulted in the birth of their son, William Patrick, whose intricate relationship with Adolf Hitler has already been explored. Alois Jr.'s life was marred by allegations of bigamy and fraud, which culminated in a conviction and subsequent imprisonment. Following his release, he relocated to Germany, where he embarked on a new chapter by managing a restaurant in Berlin. Throughout these trials and tribulations, his connection to Adolf Hitler remained distant and strained. Alois Jr.'s life, as well as the trajectory of his own family, was marked by a deliberate detachment from the political and historical weight carried by the Hitler name. He predominantly existed on the periphery of his half-brother's ascent to power, opting for a life removed from the spotlight and the ensuing notoriety, Angela Hitler. Angela is Adolf's half-sister, occupied a unique position within the family, sharing a closer relationship with her infamous brother than most. Born in 1883, Angela was the only one of Adolf's siblings whom he publicly acknowledged. She played a significant role in Adolf's life, serving in his household at Berghof, near Berchtesgaden, and being part of his inner circle. At one point, Angela had two daughters from her first marriage, Geli and Elfrida often referred to as Friedel. Gailey, Angela's elder daughter, had a particularly close and controversial relationship with Adolf Hitler. She lived in his Munich apartment and accompanied him to various events. Her untimely and mysterious death in 1931 has long been a subject of speculation. Some historians have suggested that Gailey may have been involved in a romantic relationship with her uncle, Adolf Hitler. This tragic incident cast a dark shadow over the Hitler family. On the other hand, Alfreda, Angela's younger daughter, led a more private life. She married a Nazi official and had a son named Heiner Hochegger. Angela eventually fell out of favor with her half-brother, especially after she disapproved of his relationship with Eva Braun.
In the post-war era, Angela retreated into a relatively quiet life and passed away in 1949. She bore witness to the dramatic rise and fall of her half-brother Adolf and experienced the tumultuous impact it had on her family, Paula Hitler. Adolf's full sister and the youngest sibling lived a life that was largely overshadowed by her brother's notoriety. Born in 1896, Paula's existence was marked by obscurity and financial hardship, particularly in the aftermath of World War II. She worked as a secretary and adopted the pseudonym Paula Wolf to conceal her connection to Adolf Hitler. Following the war, Paula underwent interrogation by U.S. intelligence but was not found guilty of any wrongdoing. Paula spent the rest of her life in relative anonymity choosing not to marry or have children. She passed away in 1960, leaving behind a life story that serves as a poignant example of an individual caught in the crossfire of history. Paula's identity and choices were forever influenced by the actions of her infamous brother Adolf Hitler and the impact of his legacy on their family. As the last living descendants, the lives of Alexander, Brian, and Louis, the sons of William Patrick Hitler, represent a deliberate and profound departure from the notorious legacy of their great-uncle, Adolf Hitler. These men have not only distanced themselves from the dark history associated with their family name, but have also carved out paths that contribute positively to society and humanity. Alexander, as the eldest, faced the immediate post-World War IE era a time when the Hitler name was synonymous with atrocity. His decision to engage in social work was more than a career choice. It was a personal crusade against the hatred and brutality that his great-uncle represented. By dedicating his life to helping the vulnerable and marginalized, Alexander has actively refuted the ideology of his ancestor, replacing it with empathy, understanding, and a commitment to uplift others. Brian, taking a different but equally impactful route, ventured into the field of psychotherapy. In this role, he has touched the lives of many, guiding them through their mental and emotional struggles. His profession, deeply connected to healing and compassion, stands in stark contrast to the troubled history of mental instability and extremist beliefs in the Hitler lineage. Brian's work not only aids individuals in their personal journeys, but also serves as a beacon of hope and understanding, countering the legacy of intolerance and hatred. Louis, the youngest of William Patrick's sons, chose a path that reflects a deep appreciation for nature and the environment. His work in landscape gardening is a celebration of life, growth, and beauty. In a world often marred by destruction and despair, Louis's dedication to nurturing and cultivating the earth is a quiet but powerful statement of his values. His choice to lead a life away from the public eye, focusing instead on enhancing the natural world, speaks to a desire to contribute positively and meaningfully, in stark contrast to the destructive path forged by Adolf Hitler. The lives of these three men, each choosing distinctly different paths, are united by a common thread of making the world a better place. Their stories are a testament to the power of individual choice and the ability of human beings to rise above their circumstances and family histories to forge a legacy of positivity, healing, and growth. Their journeys serve as a reminder that our actions and choices define us far more than the circumstances of our birth. The story of the last descendants of Adolf Hitler is a poignant one, marked by a resolute decision to bring an end to a lineage associated with one of history's darkest legacies. From the moment the Stuart Houston brothers, Alexander, Brian, and Louis, became aware of their family history, they formed a pact to not have children, ensuring that their line would conclude with them. This decision, steeped in the gravity of their great-uncle's infamy, is a powerful statement about their desire to consciously sever ties with the past. This sentiment is shared by their cousins in Austria, Peter Raubal and Heiner Hochegger. Like the Stuart Houston brothers, Raubal and Hochegger have chosen paths that diverge sharply from their great uncle's legacy. Neither has married nor had children, and they have expressed a similar disinterest in perpetuating their family line. 
Their choices reflect a collective determination to distance themselves from the shadow of Adolf Hitler and to lead lives that are not defined by the weight of their ancestry. Their approach to dealing with their ancestry is characterized by a balance of acceptance and intentional distancing. They acknowledge their connection to Adolf Hitler, yet they have consistently strived to ensure that this connection does not define their identities or their lives. In their rare interactions with the media, the brothers have emphasized their desire to be recognized for their individual actions and contributions, separate from the infamy of their great uncle. The question of inheritance, particularly in relation to Adolf Hitler's royalties from his book Mein Kampf, further underscores the descendants' stance. When Heiner's identity became public knowledge in 2004, there was speculation about whether the heirs would claim any financial benefits from Hitler's estate. However, all living descendants have categorically rejected any association with such inheritance. Peter Raubal's statement to the German newspaper Bild am Sonntag encapsulates this sentiment. An emphatic desire to disassociate from the Hitler inheritance and to live a life undisturbed by the past. This shared viewpoint among Adolf Hitler's descendants, Alexander, Brian, Louis, Peter Raubal, and Heiner Hochegger, reveals a deep commitment to a future that is untethered from their notorious lineage. As the years pass, with the youngest of them being 48 and the oldest 86, it becomes clear that the Hitler bloodline will soon cease to exist. This outcome, starkly ironic in the context of Adolf Hitler's obsession with creating a so-called perfect bloodline, is a fitting end to a family line that, in the eyes of these descendants, should not continue. Their decision to intentionally extinguish their bloodline is a profound act of self-determination and a symbolic repudiation of the values and ambitions that once drove their infamous ancestor. The complex legacy of being a descendant of Adolf Hitler is indeed a profound narrative about identity, responsibility, and transformation. For Alexander, Brian, Louis, Peter Raubal, and Heiner Hochegger, this legacy has meant navigating a life under the immense shadow of a name synonymous with tyranny and genocide. Their decisions around family, career, and public engagement are not merely personal choices. They are profound statements about their determination to redefine what that name represents for them and how they interact with the world. The psychological burden they carry is enormous. Being related to a figure responsible for some of the most heinous crimes in history has undoubtedly posed a challenging dilemma. How does one come to terms with such a lineage? This internal struggle goes beyond mere acknowledgement of their family history. It's about wrestling with issues of guilt by association, moral responsibility, and the fear of inherent darkness. The descendants' choices to lead lives that actively counteract the negative legacy of their great-uncle suggest a deep commitment to proving that they are not defined by their bloodline. Their efforts to forge their own identities, distinct from Adolf Hitler's shadow, underscore a powerful message about personal agency and the capacity for change. Socially, the implications of carrying the Hitler name are vast and complex. Public perception can be unforgiving, often overshadowing the individual stories and achievements of these descendants with the overwhelming narrative of their ancestors' crimes. This has resulted in a consistent effort by these individuals to maintain a low profile, often changing names and leading lives away from the limelight. The societal burden of their lineage is a constant reminder of a past they neither chose nor condone, a past that has profoundly influenced their life choices and privacy. The legacy of the Hitler name encompasses not just a personal or familial challenge, but delves into deeper moral and ethical dimensions. The descendants of Adolf Hitler, facing the world with a name associated with monumental atrocities, must navigate the intricate moral landscape of guilt by association, a guilt not of their own making, but inextricably linked to their heritage. 
This situation places them in a unique position where acknowledging the past, understanding its horrors, and contributing towards a future where such atrocities are never repeated becomes a moral imperative. This ethical burden, while daunting, can also be transformative. It challenges descendants like Alexander, Brian, Louis, Peter Raubal, and Heiner Hockegger to actively engage in shaping a better world. Their choices, whether in their professional pursuits or their decision to end the Hitler lineage, reflect a conscious effort to break away from the past and contribute positively to society. This drive towards personal growth and social contribution is a testament to their desire to counteract the negative legacy with actions that promote healing, understanding, and compassion. The story of Hitler's descendants is emblematic of the broader human experience of grappling with a complex and challenging family history. It highlights how individuals associated with infamous figures are often subjected to societal judgment and how they must work to establish their own identity separate from their forebears. Their experiences shed light on the intricate process of identity formation, the profound impact of family history on individual lives, and the societal responses to those linked to notorious personalities. Moreover, their lives illustrate the enduring struggle to find redemption and self-definition in the shadow of a burdensome legacy. The Hitler name, laden with psychological, social, and moral implications, represents a significant challenge for these descendants. The topic of whether Adolf Hitler's descendants have agreed to end, their lineage is enveloped in mystery and speculation. This discussion explores the swirling rumors about an alleged pact among Hitler's descendants to halt the continuation of their bloodline while also looking into the realities of their personal lives and the authenticity of these claims. The idea of a pact to terminate the Hitler lineage arises from the fact that some of Hitler's descendants, specifically the sons of William Patrick Hitler, Alexander, Brian, and Louis, have opted not to have children. Some interpret this choice as a conscious effort to put an end to the family line, a decision perceived as symbolic and heavy with moral significance. Bearing a name so closely tied to such immense historical atrocities might indeed influence a decision to not pass on this legacy. However, the reality of this so-called pact is more complex and multifaceted. The decisions made by Alexander, Brian, and Louis about having a family and children are deeply personal. Their choice to remain childless does lead to the conclusion of their direct family line. However, it's important to understand this decision within the wider framework of individual life choices and circumstances. There are numerous reasons why someone might choose not to have children, ranging from personal preferences and lifestyle considerations to a strong inclination to separate oneself from a challenging heritage. It's crucial to acknowledge that this decision may not be exclusively about ending a lineage. Instead, it could represent a deeper search for individual autonomy and a distinct identity that is not defined by historical connections. Delving into the lives of Adolf Hitler's descendants reveals that their choices are driven more by a yearning for normalcy and privacy than by any grand statement about their lineage. Alexander, Brian, and Louis, in particular, have led lives that are strikingly regular staying well clear of the notoriety associated with their great uncle. Their career paths and lifestyles point less towards a concerted effort to address their ancestry and more towards a simple wish to live free from the burdens of their forebears' notorious deeds. The idea of a pact, though intriguing, might not fully capture the nuances of their individual journeys and the complex reasons behind their decisions. This notion brings up ethical and philosophical considerations about legacy and responsibility. Should descendants bear the responsibility to rectify their ancestors' wrongs by discontinuing their family line? This question delves into the deeper issues of guilt by association and the degree of moral accountability one should have for their ancestors' actions. The stories of Hitler's descendants question the idea of inherited guilt and explore the dilemma of distancing oneself from a troubled past.
Their lives, a blend of fact and conjecture, show that while some have opted not to have children, this choice cannot be solely ascribed to a pact to end the Hitler lineage. Instead, these choices reflect complex personal reasons. Their experiences highlight the struggle to carve out an identity separate from a heavy heritage and the pursuit of normalcy amidst historical notoriety. The speculated pact among Hitler's descendants to end their bloodline is a narrative that stirs the imagination, but may not accurately reflect the true nature of their personal decisions. The choice of some descendants to remain childless is a decision deeply rooted in personal circumstances, which goes beyond just the aim of ending a family line. Their lives illustrate the ongoing challenge of dealing with a notorious family history and the individual paths taken to reconcile with this legacy. They underscore the intricacies of identity legacy and the innate human need to be recognized as individuals, distinct from the darker chapters of history. And that's the end of today's video. Now, we would like to hear from you. Do you think an individual's family history should significantly influence their personal identity and choices? Is it possible to completely distance oneself from a notorious family legacy? Share your views and insights in the comments section below. And if you found this discussion enlightening, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more insightful content. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.